First reading is Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is from John, chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> This Easter season we are considering the new and today I'm exploring the exhortation to sing a new song. Now the irony that I have been asked to preach on a new song has not been lost on me. For those of you who have stood near me in church back in the olden days when we could sing together you will know that whilst I may make a heartfelt sound it's rarely a melodic one. I rather think my singing is like Winnie the Pooh's spelling. I have all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. Preaching on a new song also happens to be my curacy swan song, my final sermon here in Widcombe Parish before I move on. Consequently, I've been amused by the quote from Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who said, Swans sing before they die. Twere no bad thing should certain persons die before they sing. And yet, the Bible exhorts otherwise. As we begin, let's pray together a moment. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to move amongst our midst and stir in us a fresh desire to sing a new song to the glory of God. Amen. 
Psalm 98 begins with the exhortation, oh, sing to the Lord a new song. But if we step back a moment, we realise there's nothing new about this idea at all. Throughout scripture, we have people bursting with new songs. In Exodus 15, as God has delivered them out of slavery and through the parted Red Sea, Moses and then Miriam sing the first song, evoking the whole people of God to join together. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. They sing when God leads them to water in the desert. We have covenant songs of God's faithfulness. Deborah and Barak sing a song of victory after battle, as does David. There are many sad songs of lament at injustice and suffering too. And then there's the song to top all songs, the song of songs, an extraordinary and enduring love song of Solomon. At the recognition of God's Messiah, Mary, the angels and others respond in a new song. And the Bible concludes with scenes of perpetual songs in heaven. And fittingly, as Moses sings the first song in Exodus 15, so the song of Moses is the final song in Revelation 15. But most stunning of all is described by Zephaniah, the Lord your God will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. And when I hear the skylark, I'm reminded of this beautiful truth. God prophetically sings over his people as they partner with his victory and sing to him. It seems to me that all the examples of God's people singing a new song are in response to some form of deliverance. Singing new songs is not a new idea and it occurs across every culture and era. Indeed, it's even proven to be good for our health. It reduces blood pressure and stress, unless you're stood next to me in church. It boosts the immune system, mood and pain management. It's good for our relationships. Singing together aids learning and it increases bonding with one another and with God. It's no wonder then that God invites singing as part of our discipleship to fullness of life. We know that to sing a song is not new. It is an expression of our humanity. It is following the image of God. It's good for our whole being health and it's obedient discipleship. And that could be why it has hurt so much through lockdown to not be able to sing together. How we will enjoy it all the more when we can. But why not just recite the familiar old songs? Why would we be exhorted to sing a new song? And what is that anyway? This evening at St Matt's on Zoom, we'll take this a step deeper because time allows and we'll look at the effect of singing on the spiritual atmosphere and as a key for healing and breakthrough in contested prayer. And everyone's most welcome to join us as we'll also be inviting to listen to um, the congregation to share their new songs that they've composed. For now, the way I see it is this. Certainly, we are exhorted to praise God in song for every new deliverance and provision, because all good things come from him. But I believe there's also a rhythm of heart response to God's goodness that he's inviting us to keep fresh and not allow to become stale and neglected. We are delivered once and for all from the from slavery to sin and death by believing in Christ's death, resurrection and ascension. And that is a song we can sing. But daily I fall short of abiding in his love and keeping his commandments with all my being. And so daily I have fresh opportunity to be reminded of his mercy that makes me his friend. 
just as God's mercies are endless and yet new every morning, so too may be our response. A once uh, endless song, but also new and fresh from the heart every morning. Psalm 98 goes on to show that the new song is an anticipation of the appearance of God to rule righteously over the earth and peoples. We pray this regularly. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So singing a new song is about reconnecting our heart afresh with our expression, not coldly reciting words because they sound good. And we're reconnecting our heart with celebrating afresh the goodness of God and all the marvellous things he has done. But it also um, expresses and holds a fresh expectation of God's everlasting goodness and his fulfilment of promises yet to come. Regardless of how we feel in our circumstances, a new song is a heart-connected celebration and expectation of God. But it needn't be massively well composed or long or wordy. I'm reminded of an impactful testimony I heard from Hei Wu, a Christian lady who only a few years ago had been imprisoned for her faith in a North Korean concentration labour camp. She described how the women slept on the floor of a crowded room and each morning there would be new corpses those who had perished overnight. They endured cruel beatings, hard labour and near starvation because they knew Jesus to be their friend. They would whisper words of scripture if she and fellow believers were unsupervised in the toilet block. But what struck me most profoundly in her testimony was that she, she said that she and fellow Christians would whisper one word of encouragement to each other as they passed um, one another in the fields as they were working. And I wondered, what would that one word be? Perhaps Jesus or hope or persevere? What would be your one word in that situation? I had missed the point. She and her other brothers and sisters would whisper the word Alleluia. Alleluia. They were singing a new song each day from their heart in a hushed whisper because despite their unimaginable circumstances they were aware of their eternal deliverance into abiding in God's everlasting life and love. They knew that by their friend in Jesus, by their friend Jesus laying down his life for them out of love, they could perpetually rejoice in the power of his resurrection. Family, we are exhorted to call to mind, to celebrate God's past marvellous deeds with expectation of his fulfilment. So I finish with the words from Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel and thereby to us through Jesus. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Amen. We must love one another as Jesus loves us. Knowing God's love and affection for us, let us pray to him now. Father, 
Wherever there is friction or conflict in the church, or communities are divided and weakened, give us a greater longing for your healing and a deeper commitment to forgiving love. In the wake of the anti-racism report from Lament to Action, let us heed the reminder that racism is a sin. We pray that our church can be a balanced church that reflects your values, and that, at an individual level, we don't harbour racism, however mild. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, wherever tangled political situations seem impossible to solve, wherever conflicting interests threaten peace, wherever the ears of the powerful remain insulated against the cries of the oppressed, give us ears to hear your guidance. We are in a confused sea with our United Kingdom potentially under threat of fragmentation, with our leadership addressing the greatest medical emergency in recent times, whilst Chad being challenged about their propriety, and with those in power experimenting with differing visions of our nation's position in the world. Let us remember that we live in a democracy in which our political leaders are chosen by us. We pray that those we have elected have the vision and will to create a fair and just society for all who call Britain home, and that our elected leaders are alert and sympathetic to the needs of people in the developing world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, whenever the ill or injured need comfort and assistance, wherever the elderly and housebound sit each day for hours alone, may we bring your love and help. As coronavirus compounds this situation with people desperate for restrictions to be lifted, with people suffering in the wake of COVID, possibly with loss of a loved one, long COVID or mental stress, we pray that you give them the strength to cope and that you will give us the ability to see where help is needed and inspire us to deliver that help, however small. We pause for a moment in silence to call to mind those known to us who are ill, injured or in need of comfort or assistance. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, wherever people are travelling that last journey to death, may they be surrounded by your love and welcomed into your heaven. And may those who mourn be comforted. And we pause again to call to mind those known to us who have died and those who mourn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, wherever the beauty of creation reflects your love, may our hearts be lifted to you in thanks and praise. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.